Um, Christine Hay is going to come up now and run us through um, the delights we have to look forward to in Sydney in 2020. Hello, everyone. Well, I think it was um, in Adelaide, in the Tipsy Hills, um, in the Adelaide Conference that I first uh, thought about um, a, a conference in Sydney. Um, I certainly kept pushing away that idea, um, and <laughs> but um, listening to the owner speak about the gardens and other her garden and uh, other ideas for conferences, I thought, oh yeah, that's a what well, great idea. But I'm stuck in my head, and uh, so all through the f the later conferences, it. I kept thinking about it and talking to the committee members and anyway, here we are. The next conference of the, the next national conference of the Australian Garden History Society will be Sydney 2020. Um, it will be our, <laughs> woo! Sydney 2020. It will be our 45th national conference, but 40, sorry, 41st national conference and celebrate the 40th anniversary of the society. A great achievement and a milestone we intend to reflect on. The 1827 image you see here uh, on the screen is by convict artist, by convict and artist Joseph Lysett. It's titled, Sydney from the North Shore. This is pertinent because our conference will be held on the northern shores of Sydney Harbour at Milsons Point. The theme of the conference, of our Sydney conference is many dreams, one landscape. We aim to use this topic as a framework to consider the broad phases of change which have influenced the character of Sydney, its harbour, parklands, suburbs and rural areas, and the ideas of those who influence these changes. In the foreground of the conference, just like in this slide, there will be a truthful perspective about First Nations people, um, their culture and heritage, and the idea if we care for country, it will care for us. Just as depicted here, their relationship with the landscape, with the harbour, will be explored. In contrast to this interconnectedness with the land, um, it's the opposite shore you can see. where there is a lot of occupation and the land has been broken up into big and little compartments. The concept of a layer of change can be understood when looking at this and we, can, um, and we will consider later ways of change as phases, as layers stacked on top of each other and baked by time like a giant lasagna. Uh, and this we will call this we call a cultural landscape. In line with our theme, oh, I'll just um, yeah. In line with our theme, we will visit early 19th century grants and the big dreams of those movers and shakers whose actions across the region in this small British penal outpost made such strong imprints on the land, but also on our political, democra democratic, educational, agricultural, horticultural and social lives, systems we live with today. For the birth of the 19th century and the years that followed, we will revisit community dreams, the vision of nationhood, federation, and the egalitarian model of the garden suburb, 
and the expression of these aspirations across the suburbs of Sydney. Leading up to the 1920s and 30s, there was a growing concern about the loss of Sydney's bushland, its wildflowers, its colonial convict past, and the degradation of its landscape beauty for industry, for the motor car. Who were the cosmopolitan conservationists? How did their concerns and actions enable the retention of the green Sydney we know today? We will review the landscape designers of the 50s, 60s and 70s and the impact new principles about bush regeneration had on the caring uh, for our bushland. How these designers and ideas influenced the conservation and recreation of Sydney's bushland as parkland, as places to restore the spirit as a landscape style, taking advantage of views, natural landform, rocky promontories, um, pl local plant species and materials. Um, of course, here you will see is Wendy Whiteley's secret gardens. As Stuart has mentioned um, about botanic gardens, yes, we will be visiting botanic gardens and considering this bicentennial um, layer um, and the impact it had across Sydney and its big, in terms of its big parklands. I have given away too much, or have I? The Sydney Committee um, is a wonderful troop of volunteers and we have been working for well over a year on designing the conference to make it possible. Um, here we have the, the basics of the conference, its dates. Um, so yes, Friday the 23rd, um, Saturday the 24th and Sunday the 25th of October. It will have um, 200 delegates and where that um, cost there is something we're aiming to bring down. Um, and there are, yeah, we're looking at harbour cruises um, on the Thursday, optional day at Camden, and our tours um, will be, uh, the pre and post tours will be um, the Blue Mountains and, and the surrounding area. But where will it be? So, ta-da, the, um, the lecture venue will be Luna Park. And this, you see the Crystal Palace. So that's where this time next year around, you will be entering and... Um, so yeah, that is the venue. But how does this all work? So these are the venues and so this slide so it shows the venues, which are centred around North Sydney. And from uh, the chaotic metropolis that we know as Sydney, um, we hope to extract for you by having our venues close by. So you can see A is Luna Park, the lecture venue. And we're going to have a, a day and a half, Friday full day, Saturday half day and then our um, sunset drinks, our Friday cocktail drinks, will be at Waverton Peninsula at the Coal Loader, and our dinner will be at the Kirribilli Club, so all in close proximity. So what we hope to extract for you is a sense of Sydney as a village, a place that will welcome you. <laughs> And these are the uh, main transport uh, spots. So you can see here that number one is Milsons Point Railway Station. It's a very short uh, walk down to the venue, um, which is right near number three there. Uh, number two is where we'll be uh, having the bus pick up and drop off. 
and the ferry wharf um, will be utilising as well for one of our days. The tour will be in the Blue Mountains and led by Stuart Reid. <laughs> Finally, we invite you to share in our Sydney, to explore with us the legibility of its cultural landscape. 